guys welcome back to the channel for another tutorial slash kind of review at the same time guys I am super excited I finally have picked up a new microphone after five years of doing YouTube most of you guys know I've been using the blue Yeti microphone for the longest time on this channel back when I was doing commentaries on top of Grand Theft Auto 5 gameplay on the PS3. That's how long we're talking about, guys. It's been a minute. And the reason for that is that there has never been another microphone I've seen on the market worth upgrading to like that. Anything around the $100 to $200 range, like it sounds similar or the same. Nobody can really tell the difference, to be honest. Until we got the Elgato Wave 3 microphone, baby. This is more than a microphone. This is a mixer as well. A lot of you guys know about Go XLR, and you can get this big mixer board. It gives you full control over where your audio is going and what you're hearing. This does it too, but with software instead of a big hardware mixer. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can set up your Wave 3 microphone with the Wavelink software, which is the mixer that it will come with, as well as how to integrate it with OBS and Stream Deck. And if you stay towards the end here, I'll also give my little review and the things that I think that they could improve upon with this piece of technology. So this is a microphone video. Shouldn't we hear the microphone? Of course you're gonna hear the microphone. Right now, this is the DSLR Comica mic. It's about 20 something dollars. It's directly plugged into the DSLR camera, but it, has never been the microphone quality that I want for videos. Instead of the microphone I'm using for the DSLR, we're gonna be using to the Yeti. Here's what the Yeti would sound like instead of this DSLR hot shoe microphone setup, right? Now, this is what I sound like with the Yeti microphone in this same situation, but now for my streaming setup next to my computer. As you see, I have disassembled where the Yeti mic is because I have it on this mic stand now. This is what the Elgato Wave Link 3 microphone sounds like in three, two, one. There you go. How does the Wave 3 microphone sound? What do you think? How does it compare to what you just heard from the Yeti? How close are they? Let me know right now in the comment section below. Which microphone do you think right off the bat, just listening and comparing the two differences is better? Blue Yeti or this new Elgato Wave 3 microphone? Don't be shy, put something in the comments. And in the meantime, let me show you guys how you set this bad boy up. So in the box, in addition to the Wave 3 mic and the USB-C cable, you should have received a boom arm adapter. And this attachment is what you'll use to screw in your microphone to a mic arm stand. If you don't have a mic arm stand, you can just use the desktop stand that came with the microphone. And then use that USB-C cable to connect the microphone to your computer. All right, now that we got the physical microphone set up and ready to go, plugged into the computer, we can head over to the Elgato Game Capture website, go over to the download section, and then just scroll down and find the Wavelink software. So that would either be for Windows or for Mac. This is beautiful because it works for both. So after you have the Wavelink software installed, go ahead and launch it. Elgato made this software proprietary, so you can't plug in some other microphone like the HyperX or the Snowball or the Yeti and think that you'll be able to use these mixer features. It won't work. You'll just open the program and it'll ask you to either connect the Wave 1 or Wave 3 Elgato microphones. When you have the Wavelink mic plugged in, you're gonna first see a bunch of different tracks that may not be relevant to you. So if they aren't, you can hit that down arrow next to the track icon at the top there and you can just select remove input if you do not want it. The one track everybody's gonna be utilizing is the Wave 3 track or the Wave 1 if you have that. And to configure this, just click on that drop down arrow again. I'll see the name, my input level to see if I'm peaking or not, the gain. So if I increase the gain, it's gonna peak a lot more. 
The output volume is what I would hear through my output device. So if I just get out of that, see my monitor mix here, I have it selected to the Wave 3 microphone. I can also select the built-in output as well, which I can plug in headphones to my computer if I wanted to instead of the microphone. Speaking of which, why don't I just plug in my headphones so I can hear everything coming through the mic. Below the output volume, you're gonna have your mic PC mix, and that's gonna control how much audio you hear from let's say your gameplay and your computer desktop audio compared to the, the zero latency audio from the microphone when you're speaking into it. So if I bring this down a little bit, I can actually hear myself right now and it's kind of weird. I don't like hearing myself. So however how you set that, you'll hear either more or less of your zero latency uh, speech into the microphone. With that being said, on the Wave 3 microphone, you can actually control the gain output volume and the mic PC mix on the mic itself. So all you need to do is actually click the button that's on the microphone and then you'll be able to switch between the gain and the output volume and the mic PC mix. Below those options, you have the enhanced low cut filter, which essentially will remove any sort of noise that is close by like fans and air conditioners, droning sounds. It'll help remove those sounds from your commentary audio. The option below that is the clip guard feature. So if you're screaming really loud, it won't peak your levels and it will sound fine. Very cool features, but let's put them to the test. Let's start off by removing clip guard. Prepare for the cringe. Clip guard back on, it's back on it. How does it sound? Does it sound better? Am I still peaking? Do I sound good? Please tell me I sound good. I want to sound good for my viewers, please. How about the enhanced low cut filter? I, I have it turned off because my place is pretty quiet, but let's make it a little bit noisy. Let's turn up the fans. Okay, turning the air conditioner on. Let's open my door. Okay, these are the loudest sounds that could possibly just pollute my commentary audio. Pretty loud without the low cut filter. Let's put it on and see what it sounds like. Any better? Do you guys hear all the droning sounds and cars, the air conditioner? What's the comparison here? Editing the video right now, I didn't hear a difference using the low cut filter. Sound the same to me. But the clip guard feature, that was solid. In addition to the microphone track, you can add additional applications to pull audio from. So to do that, all you need to do is go to one of your empty channel slots and select the plus button, and then just select the application you wanna pull audio from. Once you do that, you'll have a track appear. So I have ones for Spotify, Google Chrome, and the game capture card. The dial on the left will control the volume of the audio I'll hear to my monitor mix. And then the dial on the right will control the volume of audio if that's heard through my stream, which will be configured as its own audio output source within something like Streamlabs OBS, OBS, etc. The link icon up here will unlock and link the faders to where I want my audio to be. So if it's not locked, I can control them however individually, but if it is locked, then they'll be controlled together. Now listen up Mac OS users, this is perfect for us. We don't have to use the I show you audio capture input device to get our audio from our desktop anymore. So now I can just use this mixer and get audio specifically from Google Chrome and now I can also get it from Spotify. Using I show you I couldn't record audio from my Spotify but now I can. So check this out guys. I created a playlist that I could play some royalty free copyright free music on my live streams. The audio I'm playing in Spotify will go through the Wavelink application to my mixer, which can then later be recorded on a live stream. So check it out. Play this song right here. You can hear it coming through just fine. I can lower the audio of it, so now it's quieter. Bring it up. I just have full control, guys. This is just insane. If we look at the Windows side of things, adding an audio source works a bit differently as you have general output sources like browser and aux1 and aux2. The second half of those audio sources you see available at the bottom are still hardware based. To modify which applications receive certain audio into Wavelink, you wanna to go to the top right hand corner and select the icon that has the little speaker next to it. And a separate window will pop open where you can view the app audio sources associated to which output. So let's say if I want Google Chrome audio to be recorded in my Wavelink app, 
I would want to select the output dropdown next to the Google Chrome app and select Wavelink Browser as a source. If there's other apps you wanna capture audio from, just follow these same steps and use the other Elgato Wavelink output options available to you. Only other thing to show you guys here is this controls the amount of volume of audio you'll hear for your full entire mix, not just an individual track. It's a master volume audio dial to put it in simple terms. And this green ear icon means I'm listening to the audio in my headphones through the monitor mix. Now, if I wanted to monitor what my stream was hearing, which this is just a beautiful feature, I can switch it to that and I'll hear exactly what my stream hears. But I was hearing myself when I put that on. It was like annoying. That's a look at the Elgato Wavelink mixer software for this microphone. But now let's take a look how you would get this mixer audio into your OBS. To get the Wavelink audio into your OBS, because as you see right now, I have no gameplay audio. There's no commentary audio that can be recorded in OBS right now. What we're gonna have to do is go over to our settings, then go to audio, and then see how you have this mic auxiliary audio. So any of the four that you have here, you need to set one of them to the Wavelink stream. Now, you might've seen the Elgato Wave 3, so that's just the microphone if you want to just have the mic audio recorded and not the rest of the mixer. The settings you configure on the Wavelink track will also take effect if you're just using the microphone as an input source. But we wanna hear everything, so I'm gonna set the Wavelink stream, select OK, and my audio is coming through and I can actually just tune that down a little bit. We don't want things to peak. Everything's coming through at the same time. My audio is pretty cool. Setting it up with OBS, pretty easy, but there's one more application we can utilize with the Wavelink software, and that's the Elgato Stream Deck. To add the Wavelink application to your Stream Deck, you need to first go to More Actions, and then search for the Wavelink app, which is right here. I already have it installed, but if you don't have it installed, go ahead and install it. Once you do that, if you scroll down, you will find the Wavelink section right here, and you'll have all these different options that you can play with to control features in the Wavelink application with the touch of a button using the Stream Deck. So let's do one of these, for example, like Mute Output. All of my audio streams will be muted. Let's give it a test. This key is set up to mute all the output to my stream and to the monitor mix. So if I press that button, everything got muted as you can see over to the left. Press it again, everything's not muted anymore. Let's do one more example. What if I wanna mute the gameplay audio in case I don't wanna hear it while I'm streaming for some reason? Well, we can go over here to mute input, and then we just wanna select the HD60S Plus capture card, and I don't wanna hear it at all. I don't want my stream to hear it, and I don't wanna hear it, so I'll just select all, and then I'm gonna go ahead and press the button, and boom. It is muted for both of the tracks. The integration with the Stream Deck is pretty cool because then you can just mess around with the settings and the configurations, it's particular to what you want and need for your stream. Now, while testing this out for the past week, overall, things have been very smooth and really awesome. I've loved this entire setup, but I gotta mention a couple things that I encountered just in case you happen to stumble upon the same issues. For one, using the Stream Deck to control features within the Wavelink application, that didn't always work. Like I would press my buttons and it just didn't do anything. Here's an example. So this button right here controls the output audio of the capture card to my headphones and to the stream. But watch when I press it. Doesn't look like anything's happening. My capture card audio right there, it's still, um, still going. But now watch if I manually muted within the Wavelink application. I'm gonna do it right now. You'll see that it just grayed out. But just look, see how if I do it on my own to try to mute the output? I'm even getting that icon with the exclamation point. But if I do it over here, it'll mute and it'll gray out. Another issue I encountered, which only happened twice, was when I had my headphones plugged into the microphone, I would hear this crackling sound. It would just be I'm like, what the heck is going on? Craziest thing ever. It happened for a little bit, and then when I came back later, that noise was gone. But my theory to all this is maybe it could have been a performance issue on my computer. As spec'd out as it is, 
Maybe it's just not good enough, not like a spec'd out Windows Tower PC, or it could have been a small bug on Elgato's end, but nine times out of 10, I'm not experiencing these problems, especially if I'm managing the load that's on my computer. That is gonna do it for today's tutorial slash review video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit it with a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel with the post notifications on if you're new around here. Let me know what you thought about the Elgato Wave microphone. Do you like it? Is it good? Is it not worth the money? It's 160 bucks. Let me know in the comment section. For me personally, this is gonna be my new main streaming microphone. I just love the fact that it's a mixer that's not hardware, it's software based and just, so many features, so much control, especially on macOS. I don't need to use the iShowU audio capture tool anymore. I can select and control exactly what applications I want audio from for my live streams, and it's just beautiful. That's gonna do it for me, guys. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.